Hello, and then the last speaker for today, uh, Ernest Wietinch, an artist, master of arts, creator of the brand Glass Stone, and head artist of Ernesto Design. I'm very proud because I was a recensor of his diploma work when he graduated uh, um, Masters of Arts in Lat our Academy of Arts, and so I all the time was observing and I'm following up to his career and very much appreciating his career, how he is growing up and getting more and more uh, worldwidely recognized. And this is, of course, for the small Latvia, a very big benefit. Please, we are curious on your presentation. Thank you very much. And I would like to say this is a great honor for me to be here. And uh, secondly, it's the first time for me to be in such an important conference. So let's hope I will do well. <laughs> uh, the primary emphasis of this presentation is the technical preconditions for creating a character of monumental layer glass objects. I will explain the influence of light specifics of installation space as well the user's need and vision on artistic express expression. Further, I will consider th considering 3D modeling program CD4, uh, Cinema 4D and its possibilities in the object construction. And lastly, I, will sh uh, I shall go through the quality defining aspects of creating a long lasting monumental layered glass sculpture which upholds its visual and technical qualities under all weather conditions. So, my interest in um, exploration of uh, monumental layered glass started within my bachelor studies. And as final master thesis, I made and installed the first layered glass monument in Latvia. Right after that, I found a business partner and opened Studio Glassstone. And since then, uh, since then, I'm all into monumental layered glass art, and uh, our works are found in many parts of the world. And uh, many thanks goes to Professor Oyar Spari, uh, who was encouraging for me was. Uh, really, really important at the beginning of my uh, uh, Glaston uh, Studios time. So, to create character in monumental layer glass sculpture, first and foremost, one has to take light into account. Light as the most important physical factor that will impact all other processes and stages. So a good evaluation of it is necessary. It is always necessary to understand what extent of light will shine through and what will reflect on the surface. The right proportions of these two effects is required. The aspects that will define how light will be noticed on layer glass sculpture is treatment of edges. There are two main techniques, straight, smoothly broken uh, glass and ha hammered with uneven edges. There are multiple ways how to achieve uneven ones for making just a slightly wavy up to completely rugged edges. Here you can see combination of both. Uh, in the middle picture, uh, you can find the sculpture as bright and shiny object with uh, a pronounced image and shape. The thing is that the front of the sculpture is with this uh, treatment uh, with the wavy edges and therefore the middle part is much more pronounced. Uh, but if you, but looking to the same sculpture from the left side, uh, which is kind of picture number one, it is much more transparent and less reflecting. There are no obvious shapes on this side, but it provides opportunity that other solid materials cannot, and it is possibility to look inside the sculpture. The close-up in the third picture shows that straight cut, straight cut edges are mostly transparent with an insig insignificant reflections. Due to sight, slight distortion uh, that is distinctive to layer glass, viewers can observe the texture parts of the sculpture in a different ways from inside that, that forms outside. 
By changing the thickness of glass, artist can decide whether he needs more light and transparency or more active reflections and characteristic, characteristic shades of glass. The thicker the glass sheet, uh, uh, the more transparent it will be. From my experience working only with hand tools, the most suitable is eight millimeter thick glass. Uh, here's a few more examples. Very often image reveals inside revealed inside the sculpture is much more visually loaded. By posting the light source behind the sculpture, the front of which is smooth, you can bring out all the distinct textures and shape inside or on the back of it. It is not uncommon to hear comments about such works that there is an active life inside in them, even though the object itself and the light carriers are, not, are static. And um, here's some more uh, examples of backlight. And actually, this is a funny thing, because I have to say, I didn't know that till some minutes ago, that actually I worked with uh, Uldi Zarin's uh, partner, Krista Preitz, to create this last sculpture, which has this head inside. And actually, I used your help because we had multiple pictures of this person and uh, I went to several artists to create this actual head and nobody was able to get to reach this uh, accuracy of a uh, real person than your partner did. So it was actually our last hope to, to create this sculpture and, actually, and this is the only way how we was able to do that. <clears throat> Uh, next, before exhibiting layer glass sculpture, whether outside or inside, it is essential to understand will there be enough free space around it. Sculpture is this uh, sculpture in this medium demands the viewer that the viewer are able to see them from a side as a whole when optically uh, all layers merge and the sculpture becomes complete. Even smaller table-sized piece need at least a couple of meters of free surroundings to achieve the necessary appreciation of it and in its interaction with the light. When planning layered glass sculptures for outside, the question of light usually boils down to either it's very light and shiny space or too shady. Uh, the, the wildest opportunities for artists give spaces uh, where sculpture can be exhibited with sunlight coming from the back, as actually you can see in these pictures also. Before working on the design of uh, this sculpture called the Budding Flowers, we spent multiple hours together with Memphis Botanic Gardens staff looking uh, around uh, for the pl best place for a large layered, layered glass sculpture within the Japanese garden, uh, which is actually the place where it's now standing. Uh, although this sculpture is made from six millimeter thin glass sheets for a more detailed look, uh, given the very, very light setting outdoors, it reaches the necessary transparency and reflections. On the whole, it is the client story philosophy of installation place, my artistic vision and technical understanding of glass that helps to form the main part of the character of the artwork. Uh, starting my work on this sculpture, conceptually, I had to bring out the best qualities of the glass. It had to be transparent, visually light and playful with the sun. This sculpture also is a good example of how different edge treatments can bring different effects. The upper part had to take most of the attention, but the lower had to be most extensive. Using straight, uh, straight cut edges, layer, uh, straight cut edge layers from the bottom and uh, when building it uh, higher, smoothly changing to hammered edges, I was able to bring most of the attention up but the heaviest part of the sculpture is also the most transparent. 
<clears throat> when installing, installing a monumental layer glass sculpture indoors, there has to be enough space proportionally. We do not want to overpower the atmosphere of venue, and yet it has to be prominent enough to be noticed. <clears throat> Although the design of each uh, sculpture begins with a sketch and a paper, 3D modeling is an essential aid before actual working in the material or creating a physical mock-up. Sketches mostly uh, look appealing, but all extra lines and artistic incorrectness gives a wrong impression of how the actual sculpture will look like. Uh, the previously shown sculpture for Memphis Botanic Garden and the composition shown in these pictures called In Nature are examples of how necessary 3D modeling of large-scale glass sculptures is to ensure that uh, the artistic directions is on the same path with constructive solidness. Working on this composition, it was technically important to make stimulations for each of the 16 glass stems. Using the finite element method, FAM, we were able to find weak spots uh, of glass elements even before finishing artistic composition in 3D program. Working in 3D environment also gives opportunities for quicker communication with architects and clients, uh, saving a lot of time and money in comparison to modeling only in physical materials. In case after the 3D model was approved. We developed a one-to-one -one prototype using polyesterine foam, which considers considered uh, of over 10,000 individual numbered layers, which were transported into the glass. Prototype for this whole sculpture was prepared and installed to see how well it fitted uh, the actual setting, and only then made in glass. Uh, furthermore, using the program Cinema 4D throughout the development process, I am able to keep track on the center of gravity because the program allows me to calculate the weight of each layer and position it correctly around the physical center of the sculpture. When working on the sculpture's idea, the program gives countless possibilities to develop each smallest details that would not be possible in any physical mock-ups. For example, in the second picture you can see dots on sheets of glass model which I uh, can move each separately making most suitable yet important changes in the shape. Uh, this allows achieving the highest precision when working on the sculpture in this material. Consequently for this sculpture we did not use polyesterine foam model after 3D but instead we printed out each layer of paper in paper and transform it into the glass sheets. Throughout the last 11 years, constantly working and creating monumental layer glass sculptures, developing and testing them, my work was mostly empirical due to lack of information about this medium. Perhaps that is also the reason for eventually rare usage of material glass stacking technique amongst artists. It is important to understand that there are great differences between large scale and small layered glass sculptures and sculptures intended to be placed indoors and outdoors. Most important in making large scale <clears throat> layered glass sculptures for outdoors is uh, the chosen approach to fixing la glass layers together. This, by most, will impact on long-term visual and constructive performance. Most commonly used method is using UV glue. My experience shows that glass sculpture, which will be installed outside, will need about three different types of glue, and the correct ap application on the, of the glue is of utmost importance. Although some of the UA glues for glass are 
of very low viscosity nearly as water, the glue still might not spread evenly. Therefore, it is mandatory to follow the spread of the glue on and measure the level of each layer after each gluing in. And this, uh, if this is not done, <clears throat> you will get a tilted stack. And this will eventually loosen the necessary grip between glass layers. Taking this into consideration, I always recommend to cover all, uh, cover all surface of the layer with the glue so there wouldn't form larger air bubbles. Only in some special cases, this method can be slightly different. In creating a multi-layer glass artwork, precision is needed throughout all making process. Mistakes in only one layer could mean that all the work that's done till then is damaged. In the Western, Western world, there are just a few artists who work in a related to monumental layered glass sculptures. I will mention a few of them. Um, Denny Lane, uh, Bert Van Loo, Henry Richardson, Costa Varozza, and Jeremy Longford. A closer look at the work of these artists revealed differences in technical solution that, that affects the optical properties of the glass stack and its interest. Uh, and its interaction with the environment. On the outside, from perfectly smooth and transparent to dark, rough and brutal. I hope this has given you some insights into the work of Monumental Layer Glass and thank you for listening. Sorry for this light effect, but in the afternoon we got, of course, through the mirroring sun uh, coming from the windows. But anyway, thank you very much, Ernesto, for your presentation because we already saw your technological methods and also a combination with engineering and some kind of construction where you have to come down every layer, how to be cut it and then, then mount it on each other, creating your plastic or sculpture. Well, questions from the auditorium. Please, please, hold it. Like how you find the coordinates in the space. I mean, how you cal calculate like the position of the layer because it can be repositioned like a, you know. Yeah, that's actually where really handy is also this 3D imaging and uh, building this uh, model in 3D because uh, then we can uh, draw uh, get out each layer. Like uh, actually, your colleague taught me when we create this whole form. We uh, divided the necessary thickness, and therefore we got these uh, coordinates of each. And we, we just draw, bring those physically these coordinates to the glass. We measure the area of the glass and where this uh, actual piece should be. Oh, I see. I see. So actually, it's a combination of modern technology, technologies and actually real ancient, just measuring with the manual. Uh, mon mon uh, Manual instruments. Please, Arthur, my question if you can see the technology for modeling those layers of glass, why aren't you going this much further and using CNC for this? For cutting glass? Yeah. This is one thing that could ask a bit more time, but one thing is it's expensive. It's uh, more expensive than just do it by hand. Other thing is uh, these cuts that you get uh, every picture except the head, which was inside the glass. All these uh, glass was uh, broken with the hand. When you cut with the CNC, you get white edge, and it's white uh, and straight. You cannot get with uh, any machine uh, because we are looking uh, to improve our studio and looking uh, what, what the techniques give us. And basically, only some high-tech robots can do the same thing that we can do, do with the hand and hammer. Because you get this really shiny, uh, nice uh, edge. And therefore, yeah, CNC uh, can do the work if you need white glass. But you even showed also the indoor sculpture, which was a small one, with the polished edges. And of course, it uh, had another color than those outdoor sculptures, which are uh, shining this bluish green uh, polychromy. 
So do we experiment also with the color of layers and uh, different kinds of glass? Otherwise, it seems that you are using mainly window or vitrine glass. Uh, to be honest, all the glass that we use is window glass. Uh, the difference is that, uh, I don't know, I think here also, now we can get those, uh, they call selective glass, uh, that has this uh, nano layer of different uh, metals, and mostly there are those precious metals like platinum, gold, silver, etc. And this nano uh, layer which is covered on the glass gives an uh, interesting uh, uh, correlation with the light and gives some uh, uh, colors. But also we can make uh, add color into the glue. The, the, the problem for color in glass sculptures, there is no possibility. The possibility actually is really low to get different type of glass uh, where glass is uh, colored in the mass of the glass. So therefore, we mostly use only glass which has this layer of color, but the, the glass itself is done for this classical little bit greenish, or we can get this uh, completely nice transparent. Because color-wise, you can get slightly grayish, slightly brown, and a bit more green. Uh, therefore, we actually had one client who was willing to build uh, yellow uh, and uh, other bright colors the layer glass sculpture. And we were looking around the world, and no one was able to, to give us such glass that you can see, for example, in stained glass. Because we need completely straight glass, which is meant for architecture, and they did not use that. Yeah. Have you checked any opportunity to cooperate with some big glass factory in the world? Otherwise, if you are doing, of course, like a craftsman and artist only in your studio, do you uh, you depend mostly on the ready-made product? Well, unfortunately, the amount that we need is far too small. Work even uh, when we had to work with uh, when we had the opportunity to work with this big monumental glass uh, installation in nature, we thought we are buying a lot of glass, but actually for the producer we wasn't able to even get the price from the factory. They said this is uh, it's too small amount. You have to work with the partner we have already here. So you have to have a, a quite a really big order to get the specific glass. And now it's just a bit, uh, uh, things for our future. Well, I wish you such a splendid future. Thank you very much for the presentation. And I'm very happy to conclude also this day having the uh, opportunity to connect glass arts with the engineering and also computing technologies, how to construct such a complicated sculpture like yours. So I'm thankful everybody who is present, who kept all the day through, and who was online following us. Uh, and let's continue tomorrow again at 10 o'clock. So thank you for this beautiful conference and your interest to, uh, to add in this conference your knowledge and your activity. Thank you and see you tomorrow.